Hey guys, Matt. Chapter 47 finally makes the turn into the middle section, or part 2 of the book. Part 1, of course. An endless, massive presentation of the fraud that permeates and runs through every single aspect of our reality. When a new person, just starting to investigate these things, gets a hold of this book, how do you get through the whole first section of hundreds and hundreds of pages and say, well... Nice try, but I'm going to go back to CNN tonight because that I think that's real. You made some good points, but it's got to be all wrong. What's kind of fascinating about it, whether it be my presentation or anybody's, if just one or two things in the first section are correct and everything else is wrong, it still should break down everybody's worldview or the reality that they know. You can't come to the conclusion that, you're right, uh, Matt, in your presentation, nobody landed on the moon, and then go back and return to your regular reality. You can't say, well, yeah, that's interesting how the entire history of the Statue of Liberty has been hidden from us. It's nothing anybody ever told us. It's nothing that they told us in second grade. You're right, it, it, it probably re- relates to Isis and Helios, the sun god Apollo, and um, yes, that's not a crown on her head, it's, it's seven rays of light. But, you know, it just kind of makes sense that they hid what the Statue of Liberty was from us all these years. And I'm going to return to Aaron Burnett out front tonight. And, um, you know, Anderson Cooper must be out back. Just going to go back to that reality. I think a lot of people, if you handed this book to somebody, would return to that reality. But they wouldn't get very far in the book. Cognitive dissonance would take over. And they'd early on get to the section... Uh, maybe that talks about the anomalies with the moon, and they would go, this guy, just this is crazy stuff. And they'd close it, and they would just return to their normal lives to protect their their own fragile worldview, uh, per their own case of cognitive dissonance. So this coming up, it's like the Collins speech from uh, Black Mirror Bandersnatch, but instead of it being just a minute and a half, it's like 20 hours long, but it's not as profound as the Collins speech. It's the... Um, you know that I've said this many times recently. The the Hannibal Lecter, uh, what is its basic elements, Clarice? You know, read Marcus Aurelius of a thing. What are the basic elements? What does it do? This man you seek, meaning we will analyze if the trick is being played. What is the mechanism playing the trick? What does it do? This reality we seek to understand. What are its motivations? Uh, and through many of this, I'll talk like there's something standing behind the final curtain. But I'll remind people as much as I can, I, you know I believe that th- this could be simply a reality generation machine. There, There is no final boss level. There is no final curtain to pull back like the curtain pulled back with the Wizard of Oz pulling the levers. Um, that gives everybody the impression there is... A final person to find somewhere, the wizard in Oz, who's pulling all the levers. And in this reality, it's likely you pull the final curtain, there's nothing there. Or just another hallway it wants you to walk down. Or another maze it wants you to enter into. So I'll talk a lot like an entity here of some kind has hijacked our reality. But I want to make it very clear, uh, it, it may be the structure of reality itself uh, to wanting us looking for it. But there is no final end to it. It, it, it's it's part of, of how reality operates itself. So with that being said, I will start the turn into part two. Guys, one other thing. Um, in analyzing the screen and what it wants from us, I do try to work in, whenever I can, practical advice related to passing the life test the way I see it. But as the book gets closer to the end, it's more about what's the internal or self-work we need to do using the tools of this realm. That's not what the middle section is all about, but I try to work it in whenever I can. For example, the last chapter on the straw man and the legal fiction, I said, it's a good idea whenever you see your name presented in all caps, uh, you know, at the the very basics, every time you see it, understand what it is. It's the system attempting you to identify, it's wanting you to identify with the legal fiction, to breathe life into it, to animate it. So do whatever you can to, 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 to do the opposite, even if you just acknowledging, oh, here's the system putting the legal fiction 
in front of my face again. I'm not going to animate it. I'm not going to breathe life into it, even even if it's just an acknowledgement. So I'll do that whenever I can, and more of that comes as the book gets towards the end. But again, that's not... I'm not as strong in those areas. I'm not a life coach. I break down the fraud and I expose its motivations. That's more of what I bring to the table. I will try to do those sorts of things as much as I can. And they come more as the book moves on. Chapter 47. Up until this point, we've been in the weeds. About a thousand examples have been presented asking you to notice that things in life just don't add up properly. It's time to take out our hot air balloon, take it up, and look down from 10,000 feet so we can finally see something. After all that's been presented over how many weeks or months, what the heck is going on then? Now, even if just a portion of what was presented is correct, then your worldview is just completely turned upside down, crumpled up, throw it out the window. If just a little bit of it is right. God forbid if most of it's right. (laughs) Sorry, but nobody knows exactly what the heck is going on. If somebody believes they know what's going on with 100% certainty, then they surely don't know. If you think you can investigate reality from mainstream sources like the news or from a university, you cannot. They're not even trying to find the answer. Their very reason for being is to lay breadcrumbs that lead us away from the truth. Again, most of these people are not in on it. A university professor, for example, is simply presenting what he or she believes the real world to be as it was regurgitated to them. I think it's safe to say that the reality that we humans experience on this plane, it's not normal, natural, or organic. But it may be what was intended for us. Okay, I'll I'll get back to that. It's not normal, natural, or organic. But it may be just what we need at this moment in time. I I will get to that over the next (laughs) how many hundreds of pages. The way we live as humans is completely at odds with the natural world around us of plants and animals. We have nothing in common in the way we live with millions of species around us that live in a completely different way. Now there's a group here who has likely been in, quote, control for a long time perhaps thousands of years, perhaps far longer. From here forward, I believe it's important to really make a distinction between us, the people reading this, and them. You know, the people that appear uh, in, in political shows and on the news and Hollywood and all of them. No matter if it's accurate or not, you must see the George Bush creatures and the Nelson Rockefeller types and the George Clooney types as completely, almost a completely different species than you and I. This is the only way to have a basic understanding of what is going on. You have to see them as, as per the definition of the word alien. Many times you'll hear me say, they did this, or they did that. Insert whatever name you want for they. Controllers, elite, illuminati, president, prime minister, queen, Lochnar, parasites, creatures, penguins, etc. Insert whatever name you want for for that catch-all, for what they are. They that the minions of the screen and the minions who motivate the screen all around us that want us to engage with it. The name doesn't matter. Flip over the dollar bill. What we will examine is what that thing represents, despite its name. The pyramid and glowing eye, to me, represent the entire system that has made you, over many, many years, decades, centuries, or lifetimes, a free-range slave. Now, they've chosen the eye, obviously. Uh, That is what is on their flag. Um, We see it, unfortunately, at this point as something very evil. But like most things, they've taken something that potentially was good, and they've hijacked it. They've bastardized it, adulterated it. The swastika is the same way. Something that over thousands of years was very, very good. Uh, now we are, they've hijacked it. Now it's bad. That is likely uh, what they do uh, with the eye. You, as a human being, don't have a history before about 4,000 years ago because they don't want you to know your history. Everything we should know about ourselves has clearly been wiped out and hidden. Only being able to trace our roots back so kind of through Egypt to 
kind of through Mesopotamia and kind of through Babylon. Quite frankly, that is ridiculous. Human beings didn't just find intelligence in the last 4,000 years, which is cosmically. It's like saying we got smart at 11.59 and 59 seconds and 9 tenths of a second to midnight. It's ridiculous. Are we to believe that for 99.99% of our history, we were just crouched around a fire playing with our own poop? In the Pink Floyd song, Keep Talking, Stephen Hawking's computer voice says, For millions of years, human beings lived just like the animals. Then something happened. We learned to talk. Sure, Stephen. Yeah, that's it. We learned to talk. Why the hell did I think of that? Stephen, that's absurd. They want us to believe we were just some kind of race of ape people for millions and millions and Carl Sagan billions of years. Just ape people. Not ape people. Ape people. To me, our history was taken from us the same way a lion tamer in the circus never wants his animals to realize they are more powerful than he is, to understand that they were once free beasts that roamed the Serengeti. Frankly, our controllers don't want to get Siegfried and Royd by us, which is what we're capable of if all of us ever woke up to it. Instead, most of us are tigers in a Vegas show getting zapped in the balls by the system and asking for more. Thank you, sir. May I have another? There are two aspects to government, or, quote, those in control at the present time. There's the outward government that you see on the news, for example. This is the land of elections and debates and kissing babies and all those shenanigans. The people that appear in this TV soap opera, those people, they don't hold any power. If they're big-name politicians, they're mostly actors. The real power in this world you'll never see in your lifetime. It's beyond what people call the deep state, in my opinion. They're allowing more talk of the deep state, no doubt, in today's media, which introduces the idea to the masses that agencies like the CIA and the NSA are actually in control. Well, they talk about the deep state all the time today, like it's a real thing. 15, 20 years ago, before that, no. It was just politicians in control. They can see that millions of people are now noticing the clown show of politics and they need a new story. This is another false, pissed-on breadcrumb. So the few who ask questions are given an answer they believe that accurately identifies the truth. Sure, the deep state has far more power than the bozos running for office and in Congress, no doubt about it. But they're not the final entity behind this, quote, curtain, in my opinion. Remember, the final curtain likely doesn't exist. George Bush looked up in shock when Andy Card told him that 9-11 was being executed, reading that book in Booker Elementary School, and Andy Card came in and apparently said, America is under attack. I believe he knew generally what it was, generally what 9-11 was and what was going down. But he had Bush had no detailed understanding of it. He certainly had no authority over it. In my opinion, he wasn't even told the date or the specifics of what would go down. Yeah, the President of the United States wasn't even told the the specifics. Absolutely just a puppet. They all are. Again, the angry, stunned look on his face in Booker Elementary as he sat there reading The Pet Goat, it was like he was saying to himself, Holy crap! They really did it. That thing I kind of heard uh, when I was delivering coffee to them a few times, I, I can't believe it. They actually did it. Now, I'm pretty confident this interpretation is close to the mark about what Bush did or did not know about 9-11, no matter how crazy that sounds. George Bush got real information in the way a child may overhear things playing under the table of his father's poker game. George Bush was an absolute puppet, a joke. We don't know who the final dark ones are who live behind the curtain. They may not even be human. I don't put words in my mouth. I didn't say they're aliens running around with little like little green men with ray guns. If we all share the same ancestry at some point, all of us, even us between we and the George Bush creatures, then they would probably want nothing more than to add a gene or a chromosome at some point so they can officially declare themselves a different species from we the unwashed. If that happened, 
and they have just one chromosome difference, one bit of DNA that's different, they versus us. If that happened by definition, they're no longer human. They would literally be alien by definition. At this point, there's endless evidence that shows, quote, reality is somehow flexible. It's not as fixed as we were led to believe by our science teachers. Remember lectures on the constant speed of light and how impossible that is, that it always remains a constant. Our entire lives we've heard, the laws of physics can't be broken. Well, it appears they can be, and not just by light. If you're Mandela affected, you need no further evidence of fluid reality. If you're not, I just led you through a series of impossible coincidence and impossible synchronicity where the chances of all that was just presented coming together is about one in trillions, billions of times over anybody's threshold of what can possibly be a real world. The solar eclipse by itself is impossible by any practical definition. Impossible. It's also obvious that this reality is some sort of script that's running. Perhaps this explains why the concept of fate was so prominent in the ancient world. They noticed the script too. That's why all they assigned a whole set of gods called the fates and everything was fate. They saw the script where most of the dummies around us don't see any aspect of the script that's being that's running but it's being laid down. It's being force fed onto us. Logically, the only way to successfully run a script over top human experience is using some sort of illusion or simulation or some sort of matrix construct. At the very minimum, whoever is trying to screw us has an understanding of how the gears of reality work and they're tinkering with it. At the minimum. At the minimum. Now, if you can't see that, and everything's just hard and hard and real. If you can't see that as a minimum, the rest of this book is not for you. Okay, at the minimum, the, there's an ancient understanding and that reality is being tinkered with. How else could you lay down a script? Now, I give tremendous credence to this, quote, life matrix theory because I don't believe regular old men and regular old women, women can pull this reality fraud off to such a degree. Look at the first 46 chapters. What's this area? Fraud? What's that area? Fraud? What's this? A fraud? What's that? A fraud? Everything can't be a fraud. They can't pull it off all the time. I mean, it breaks down what the notion of what reality is. Not only do they pull off all the fake events on the ground. Oh, well, it's hard enough just to pull it off. Should we, should we stop there? No. You need to code it in gematria. And you need to have times and dates and license plates and everything else coded uh, so the, the event has to deliver a symbolic message in addition to a real fraud. And we need to get that right every single time. When a message is not hidden in the numbers, well, then they just stick the 33 in your face. No, uh, in some way, we all have a differing opinion on this, the world is not real. No, it's just not regular old men and women organizing all this stuff we see around the world. It's beyond that. It has to be beyond that. What's really happening is inexplicable at this point. A reality breakdown. Something else is going on beyond regular human perception. Officially, there have been hundreds of these mass shootings. Officially, since Sandy Hook. Hundreds. Of course, almost all of them were fake and put on. As I said in my uh, Saturday Night Rant (laughs) the other day... This simply can't happen. You, you simply can't pull all of this off successfully unless something somewhere wields a certain power over an aspect of reality itself, something we don't understand. It's time to think far bigger than just crisis actors that paid and threatened, as I said a few days ago. That's first grade conspiracy. Because we can see all the fakery is clearly going on and no one around us sees anything then something we truly don't understand is going on uh, because uh, it's the giveaway is is how uh, we see something that seems so clear that nobody around us in our family and friend circle can see at all before we dabble and theorize i need to tell you one thing if there are just five things you remember from this book just five this will be one of them to please remember 
In an endless examination of who is doing it to us, we will never find the answer. Perhaps the best reason that supports that this reality is some sort of illusory matrix is the never-ending rabbit holes that just keep popping up forever. We see now the nature of the maze that this matrix throws at us. And anybody that tries to figure it out soon finds that the nature of the maze is endless. It's a fractal on top of a Mandelbrot set. There is no winning. There is no final destination in terms of finding specifics of how one puzzle piece um, relates to the other. We can make those connections, but no picture ever forms. There is no final puzzle piece where you say, oh, I've got it done. That will never happen in this reality. It's truly Sisyphus pushing his boulder up the, to the top of the hill just to have it roll back down again for all of eternity. Just when we think we're getting this realm figured out, it throws something else at us, something unexpected. We know now that this is its nature. Think of it as a reality generation machine and let go that everything is real, that a rock is hard, and everything eventually can be figured out. No way. Back to Hannibal Lecter and Marcus Aurelius. What does it do? The reality we seek to understand. What it does at its basic nature is it throws endless breadcrumbs, rabbit holes, and mazes in our face, or those uh, we call mutants that can see that something not quite right is happening out the window. doesn't throw these things uh, at your brother or your sister or your, your friends because they don't think there's anything wrong at all. I think we're all getting close when we see or, or at least accept that the final destination is kind of understanding that the ship can never dock. There is no final port. A real world of real things could not do all of this shit to us all the time. Unlike Sisyphus, who of the Greek legend was doomed to keep pushing this boulder up, the Sisyphus of this realm, we Sisyphuses, truthers, we have free will, right? Uh, He, today's modern Sisyphus, can choose to keep pushing up his rock, but he must only push the rock up knowing and expecting it will roll back down the hill. Even if he knows the outcome, there are still reasons for him to try to push it up the hill again. For exercise, for example, or just to witness the wonder of how it keeps happening right in front of his nose. However, it's a lesson for us here. Before he tries to do it one more time, he must understand what will happen before he makes the attempt. This system gives most truthers a hill and a rock. It tempts them with a finish line at the top. For if they would just try one more time, they'll get it. Now we can choose to spend time researching And here's another rock to push up. Here's another rock to push up. This rock's called mud floods. Research that. This rock's called Tartaria. Research that. We can choose to do all that and continue researching Rothschild banking and everything that was looked at in the front section. That's fine. Again, it's fine to do all that. It's it's actually an addiction for many of us. It's fun for many of us. But realize there will not be an end to it. There's never an end to it. This matrix will always lay another breadcrumb. Always. If there is not a terminus or a final room to find or a final curtain to pull back, one may think all this time was just a waste. Just why'd I do all that then if if it can't be won? Not at all. It is not a waste at all. It is part, an essential part of the life journey. Like I said, to see there's no end is an end in itself. We can then rise above this bullshit and look back into ourselves and really start to grow. We can improve ourselves in a way the system absolutely hates. Improving your inner self or spirituality, uh, fostering spirituality and spiritual ties to different aspects of oneself, that's friggin' kryptonite to the George Bush creatures. Look how they've structured society. That's the last thing they want anybody to do. You'll hopefully have a better understanding of it by the book's end. For now, let's just keep trying to understand the impossible reality matrix. Let's almost, I hate to say it, play their game just a little while longer. We have to understand this reality we seek. Of course, people listening now have heard this a million times. It's possible, even probable. This realm, whatever it was intended to be, has been hijacked by a malevolent entity. 
sure that fits well with the story of Satan or the Demiurge, but I'm not sure who the culprit is here. We're never going to be able to point to a culprit. It doesn't matter at this point who the culprit is by name. If your water is poisoned, that's enough to know. Does it really matter to know the type of poison? Why would you care the type of poison? You just need to know the water's poison. You're not going to drink it either way. I believe if we're going to figure out what was in any back room, or what Dick Cheney grovels over, or if we're ever going to find the thing that takes George Bush over its knee for a spanking, we would already know that by now. We have it figured out. There likely is no creature in the back room. It may not be as simple as a children's story and all be summed up with a neat little bow at the end. A reality generation machine has no back room. Just understand the breadcrumbs it lays are endless. If you follow them, as I said, don't expect to find an end. A hijacked reality is one possibility. There are others to explore later. For now, let's just assume the evil bastards found a way to manipulate reality. It seems like those who have hijacked reality did it to benefit themselves at our expense. That's the way it seems. I remind you that about a hundred families control about half of the wealth on the earth. Now, some dummy right now is saying to me, well, that's capitalism for you. No, it's not. Real markets with real supply and demand in a free society, that's what they tell us, it can't possibly concentrate wealth into about 500 hands. The merits of capitalism is a freedom illusion in this realm. I believe some of these people, as well as a few others who lead certain secret societies, Some of these people understand, have a good understanding of what's going on, in my opinion, and what has always gone on, and what their role is in delivering this grand script. Yes, it appears the George Bush creatures are role players in this matrix. They are not the final decision makers, if that even exists. They're role players. They execute sticking the tentacles up your butt. As bad as they are, you will see that their role can actually be a benefit to you and I. A benefit, not materially to you in this realm, but a benefit to your spiritual development and life journey. That, of course, is much more important than getting a beach home and getting your dick sucked off again. Oh, the wonders of this 3D realm you and I are leaving behind. As I've said many times now, I believe consciousness resides somewhere else and not between the ears in a pile of mush. Now, if that's true, you can basically throw out everything ever presented by some professor in a lecture hall. This human body may be as it was described by the witch in the movie The Huntsman, the golden witch in The Huntsman, Winter's War, who said, Sister, this is but a vessel. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty clear at this point. When you rent a car at Ford, or when you rent a Ford at Hertz, that was like the Kennedy to Lincoln synchronicity mix up. When you rent a Ford at Hertz, do you think the car is you? <laughs> no. Um, in this world of duality, it's almost like there are two yous at odds with each other. And you must use this reality to choose one or the other in this life. Was Joe Pesci's the two utes? Was that a truth drop? Well, I'm kind of kidding. I'm not going to go there, but it's possible. But either way, what's a ute? I I don't think Joe Pesci's line about the two utes was actually a... a, a, (laughs) You never know, though, because they they put the truth drops are in The Simpsons. And the more dumbed down it seems to be, maybe the more truth there is. Two potential paths here, two us. You have to pick one? Yeah, it's on the table. We can clearly see the you the system wants you to be. It's endless materialism and physical pleasure, with the modern magic wand being a cell phone. Society is a pusher man that wants your ego and the frontal lobes dominating your essence on this realm. This is a world of the lower chakras. What could possibly be more important than gathering up more materialism for the big head so it can plot conquests for the little head? Now that's, that's what I call living. The new sports car and the second home at the beach leads to more status in this realm, and then that, you know, it doesn't it goes without saying, leads to more sex acts. This entire world system is set up to lay down temptations and distractions. Distraction is absolutely the key. 
absolutely the key. We'll talk about that uh, at length. It appears if you take the bait, it wins, something wins, and you lose. The Satan archetype wins, and you lose. This is an area where Jehovah Witnesses and I absolutely agree. The metaphor of offering up the apple plays out in front of each of us a hundred times a day. The Satan archetype is real. The gigantic theme of this book is to observe what type of person the system wants us to become and then to run the other way. Do the opposite of what it wants. First, you have to be able to clearly see what it wants. In the modern era of this realm, there seems to be a forgotten part of self that most people have been conditioned to cast aside. The goal of the George Bush creatures, who express themselves through society and through what we call the system, their major goal is to take away your humanity, to make you cut ties with the divine nature inside all of us. However, they can do nothing to us directly, for the most part. In terms of screwing ourselves over, we need to do it to ourselves. There's still an aspect of us that can use inner feeling and inner knowing to make decisions. A hidden sense that doesn't use English words to learn. This part of us feels. It's a lost human superpower. It's the part of us that wants to help others and integrate with nature. A side that wants to connect to the immortal aspect of self. Some call the concept higher self. Whatever. It doesn't matter what we call it. Now that's new age. No, it does, it, we're all in the same foxhole in this regard. It appears that one of the main goals of this reality and its construct is to lead you away from any path that leads you back to higher self. If you don't like this new age term, so what? You know what I mean. I believe we've been drawn away, this reality draws us away from the most important aspect of ourselves, and it's been doing it for so long that we no longer even know what we should be looking for. Is this what the Holy Grail truly represents? Not finding a golden cup, but finding an aspect of oneself or finding oneself. Is that what the metaphor of the yellow brick road is all about? No, it's not uh, F. Frank Baum's uh, um, plea to implement a silver system to take over the monetary system. I used to believe that too. No. That's looking around one corner. There's no doubt that the pusher man who controls this realm and delivers the script has done a great job leading us away from our true selves with its Hansel and Gretel temptations. It's out to kick us off the yellow brick road which is the path of the true human being. It impedes us with its flying monkeys, witches, and quite literally, poppy fields of heroin. Truth drop in the Wizard of Oz? Soon y'all be falling asleep in heroin fields, maybe, but I don't think so. Most ancient nursery rhymes have massive esoteric hidden meanings. Row, row, row your boat, life is but a dream. Well, for those that don't know, for the one guy that doesn't know, let me do the whole thing. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. If there's one guy out there that didn't know, i got to cater to him. It's not an accident that what happens to be an idiotic song that Forrest Gump types would find boring as hell is world famous. Row, row, row your boat, life is but a dream is world famous. Think about that. How is that possible? How could a turd like that song get to be world famous? Because it was meant to be world famous. It's a truth drop. Why would Star Trek choose to have it in its... have the main characters sing that song around a campfire in the opening of one of its major movies? Of course, there's no other explanation. A massive truth drop. Life is but a dream. Yeah, it's likely. One day our souls, spirit, will wake up to something greater than this cartoon 3D realm. Ring around the rosy, pocket full of posy. It's a ritual from the good old days of the Black Plague. There's so much hidden uh, esoteric occult type meaning in these nursery rhymes. And they get away with dropping truth nuggets by embedding the truth in what the masses think are idiotic forms of media. So they don't look for truth there. And people around us... uh, aren't looking for any truth anyway. But 
they we've learned okay we've learned this point that sometimes the most massive truth will be embedded in the most idiotic forms of media now do you think that after 30 years of simpsons do you think that after 30 years there are millions of people who just can't wait to watch the simpsons on sunday night just uh you know i swear to you my my roommate at penn state uh, he'd say three hours to star trek he loves star trek the next generation and he'd count it down two and a half hours to star trek i mean you think people are doing that about the simpsons after 36 years i guess it's the same for jeopardy and wheel of fortune 36 years with the same hosts they've been on for far longer than that now these shows these types of shows exist for a third of a century for esoteric reasons i don't have all the answers here I don't have the, any time to stray into it either. I wasn't shown inner uh, knowledge by uh, Mr. Beeks that tried to meet me at the orange level of the parking garage. But just take a moment to apply common sense and some gut feeling and some inner knowing. How could the same moronic stuff like Simpson cartoons exist for about a third of a century? Young people today under age 35, they don't give a shit about the Simpsons. So th- they keep running the show knowing about a third of the population will never ever watch how many older people do you think are still watching simpsons after 25 years in a row without getting tired of the same old shit from bart and homer no get real probably nobody's watching it has nothing to do with money running those shows these shows exist for other reasons they exist to reveal truth in some way so the parasites get a get out of jail free cosmic karma card being awake and many prefer the term aware being aware begins by recognizing the world is not what it seems that's it that's the first step it's just all of this as it's presented no that's it's it's not what it seems it's not as it's presented that's the first step in in this whole journey but, but, but and i point you know that but i point it out because 99% of everybody around us doesn't see any of that. Just this is exactly as it's supposed to be. I mean, this is all real. Are you kidding me? Understand the worldview you carry is not your own. Or in the case of everybody around us, this is why they're they're completely fooled. They don't carry their own worldview. They carry one that's been constructed for them over a lifetime by a control structure that masterfully has everybody believing they're free. Because people can leave their homes at any time of day and night and drive out to see a movie or they can go to a convenience store to have late night hot dogs topped with 10 hour old chili meat they believe they have freedom they gobble down the hot dog while ignoring the thousands of limitations the control structure has placed on every facet of their lives this quote freedom that they're so thankful for is confirmed through comparison with the hellish conditions that exist for people living in other countries and living in other parts of the world I'm better off than those poor devils that live under that little fat man in North Korea, so this country is wonderful. It is wonderful by comparison. On its own, it sucks. You could only drive out to get your pig snout hot dog rolling eight hours on metal rollers that haven't been cleaned in about two months. If you, as a prisoner, have earned the privilege of spending time out in the yard, if your car registration has lapsed, you may not go outside into the yard to fraternize with Andy Dufresne and his friend Red. Obviously, I'm not saying the need to register your car creates a slave system by itself. I could write 50 pages on all the other things you're forced to do correctly in this realm since birth in order to be able to go out at night and get your David hog dog. The mass volumes of laws now millions of pages of what you need to do to comply creates the slave system via a million paper cuts that numb people don't notice it's like the absolute jerks who say i'm free and clear because i've now paid off my home and my home mortgage i'm free and clear uh fine you've just satisfied tony soprano but don corleone representing the school tax the Japanese Yakuza's representing county property tax, and Gazo, the little mobster from the movie Rocky, who in our example represents township tax. Those guys, even though you're free and clear, will be coming to pay you visits for the rest of your life. 
They'll figuratively break your thumb if you don't pay up, which is probably better than losing your home. Does it make sense that three racketeering mobsters need to be paid off for the rest of your life for the privilege of being on your own land? Maybe it's not your land then, eh? Typically, somebody who pays $5,000 a year is called a tenant. It's freedom only if we conform to the terms and conditions of the system's uh, manufactured freedom. We have to conform to thousands of terms and conditions. How the hell is that freedom? This first section into part two is a bit redundant, but we're all at different levels here. It's too important not to make sure everybody's not on the same page going forward. Step one is seeing, simply seeing that CNN isn't real and the world is some sort of construct. Now, we'll have differing opinions, but we need to agree on that. At some point, the world was, for lack of better words, we call it hijacked by what I call the George Bush creatures. And as a result, this is a degraded bastardization or warping of what should be. Again, I will get into the point later, later, that they're here actually for our benefit. That, that, that's a higher concept that comes in later. For now, let's just, let's just say they've hijacked it. It is also, it's possible. However, if you suggest to your friends or you tell your family that this reality, can't you see it, guys? This is, this is hijacked. This is, we're getting screwed over here. I mean, that, incredibly, they won't see it. So, you know, you call forth facts like this and they still don't see it. Um, let me stand up and give this speech at the Thanksgiving table. Family, in the 20th century, governments killed 250 million of their own people, not including World War I and Two. Did you say governments killed 250 people? No, I said 250 million of their own people. Now stick that turkey leg in your mouth and chew on it. Think of a computer virus that's taken over the operating system. This is where we live now. Think of the George Bush creatures as Agent Smith from the Matrix movie, if you want. Again, I remind you, the creatures and the role they play here, you'll see, will be a, can be a tremendous benefit to us. As I said, we'll explore that later. Think of the most peaceful walk in nature you can possibly imagine. Or think of an amazing episode of Blue Planet or a nature show like that. No doubt, based on scenes like this all over the world, this realm can still be a very beautiful place. The element of heaven that still exists here may be far older than the hell. People who are not completely brainwashed look around and see that something is not right with the world. Our lives are not the carefree frolicking around the blue lagoon described during the golden age of human existence. This matrix fills us with stress and distraction at every turn on purpose. All your stress is not the natural result of modern life. That's what they want you to believe. Often we find people who are beginning to see through the fraud and awaken, we see that these people like us are very caring individuals. They, you and I, are the opposite of the apathetic monsters, apathetic, sorry, apathetic monsters who parade around the halls of Congress or sit on the board of chemical companies. Monsters who would make babies suffer before impacting their quarterly profits. Think about your favorite scenes in nature and consider the parasite upon the land here, which is the modern human being and what the system has turned him or her into. The parasite is what human beings are now designed to be by the system. The original human being was likely not a parasite on the land or of its surrounding or on anything. Look at the Native American Indians, for example. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not supposed to say Indians. I don't give a shit. I don't bow down this political correct crap. I don't know how many people we can wake up at this point or save, people around us. I see the way the bulls are running, and I'm climbing over the fence to get away from the herd. You can't save everybody. We likely can't save humanity. They need to want to save themselves. Work on saving yourself first. First, what do flight attendants say before takeoff? They say, secure your own mask first or you're both going to die. If that's the message they want to convey, then why don't they just say that? Flight attendants, say what you mean. 
You put your mask on first, before your little one, or you're both going to die. They should deliver that real message like they delivered on Soul Plane. Do you think we were meant to coexist in harmony with the rainforest? Or were we, human beings, were put here to bulldoze over the trees and put in more shopping centers? The local people of the Amazon are very happy about the construction of the new CVS, so more drugs can be dispensed. At any moment in modern history, it's said there are over ten wars going on somewhere, or at least, quote, killing conflicts being waged somewhere. You'll find hundreds, if not thousands, of people being killed a day around the world, not for reasons related to the laws of nature, fighting for water, food, land, protecting your family. Wars today are fought for greed, lust, power, avarice, hate, religion, and for not giving up weapons of mass destruction that were never there in the first place. It seems if people just evolved here naturally over time, the perverted situation out our window would not exist any longer. We would, by now, be living in relative harmony with each other and with nature. The society we're forced to live in has been shaped by a very sinister and nasty presence. Notice that most people around you think their lives are completely normal. It's just the natural evolution of what humans should be over time. It's the best we can do. 250 million dead from governments in the 20th century. Yeah, so, okay, what's the problem? People around us ask. What's just the best a modern society can do? No, it's a cooked-up perversion of what should be. When we turn on the news, this world is endless rape, arson, theft, and pedophilia. Amazingly, I wrote that line before I learned of yet another round of Catholic Archdiocese pedo scandals. Really? Another round. And people just keep pouring back into the, those churches. Really? How many, what's this, the fifth round? Give me a break. How many pedo scandals will Catholics put up with before finding God without a trillion dollar middleman? This wonderful modern life is 1,000 workers being put out in the street in Detroit because a new factory in Mexico will yield a, will yield a million dollars of additional profit. Yeah, we move everything to Mexico, we'll be able to make an additional million dollars a year. The CEO then will use his bonus to buy a $500,000 boat and not think twice that he just pissed away half the money he saved by putting his workers out on the street and moving the plant to Mexico. Modern life is a perversion of natural law. It's a sports figure who can barely read, getting paid $115 million over five years, while you have to take a second job so your car isn't repossessed. It's a Hollywood director forcing a young woman to have sex while demanding she call him the bad lieutenant. It's another million-dollar athlete beating his girlfriend in an elevator on a security camera. It's stockbrokers making about $15,000 a day buying and selling blips on a computer and blips going up and down on their computer monitor while contributing nothing to humanity. Now, stockbrokers off drugs, they sleep very well at night believing that they benefit all of us by providing liquidity. Yeah, like that's fucking important in the grand scheme of things. Liquidity. Liquidity. Liquid. Hey stockbrokers, take your liquidity and shove it up your ass. My advice Go volunteer at a homeless shelter. Start paying back your karma debt today. Guys, one point of clarification away from the book. I, there's all different types listening. If you're a financial planner, you've got your Series 6 or 7, helping people get their handle on finances, planning for college, that, that's fine. We all live inside this money system. I don't mean to piss you off. I'm talking about the CNBC-type fast money traders, or Jim Cramer is his name, that little pissant run booyah and all the, he's a f- total fraud he's people have lost their whole life savings listening to that little asshole and this fast money traders they come on the, and they're worth just that karen Feynman or whatever her name is on cm she's a, a hedge fund manager on fast money worth hundreds of millions of dollars these people just trade and they they chase little blips all day long and they get insider information they chase blips and they make themselves 15 to 20 thousand dollars a day Parasites on humanity. I'm not talking about 
you know, financial planning and getting helping people at the at the family level. I'm talking about the stockbroker parasites that are on CNBC. Point of clarification. Life out our window did not just evolve naturally. This is a modern society that was crafted to be exactly as it is. It did not come up organically or by chance. We're asked to believe these problems and all the problems of society are just too big to fix. It's exactly the opposite. The problems were put here on purpose. No one in control wants to fix anything deep down. They don't want to fix anything. The hidden hand of the controlling puppet masters is one of the biggest points of this book. The evidence is now overwhelming. They don't try to hide their hand anymore. What's remarkable is no one notices, and the rest of the people around us don't give a shit. For crying out loud, school shooting victims get out of the hospital the same day or the next day and give interviews with band-aids over their entry and exit wounds and they still have their hospital bracelets on and people shoveling in their macaroni and cheese while watching during their dinner time. They don't think anything's wrong with that. But we see it. Their presentation of reality to at least the mutants that can notice. Their presentation of reality has now become ridiculous. And that's one of the things also that we'll try to find out why that is. Really consider the state of affairs of modern human life. Do you think the blueprint that brought us to never-ending war, starvation, disease, materialism, and violence was natural, normal, organic? I'm not telling a Bible story here, But there are tremendous parallels to the serpent in the Garden of Eden, screwing Adam and Eve over. Is it actually Satan doing this to us for real? I don't know. I don't think so. But the wise man doesn't take anything off the table when the stakes are this big. To me, as I've said, Satan is likely a metaphor for the obvious evil that resides in this realm. We don't know exactly what it is. If not Satan... It's something that's acting out Genesis and Revelations at the same time. It could be like the Matrix itself, and the hijacker may be an AI system that has learned how to rearrange reality at the uh, core or quantum level. We don't know. Again, don't let me hand you 100 Sisyphus rocks to roll up the hill and then have it roll down again, getting nowhere. We'll likely never know the boss level and the final bad guy. In a reality generation machine that doesn't even exist, it's just the nature of what this realm is, it doesn't matter. Uh, All of these details don't matter because it ultimately just comes down to what we need to do for ourselves. And what we need to do for ourselves is the same. That's the beauty of it. It's the same yellow brick road. We don't have to match our path to exactly what creature may be doing it. It's the same path no matter what is going on. That's the beauty of it. We've been removed and disconnected from nature on purpose. Our long history has been removed from us on purpose. In the past, we likely had wondrous abilities that we've been trained to forget. Young elephants in the zoo are taught they can never break free from the ropes. Later, when the restraint is as thin as a shoelace, The elephant makes no attempt to break free. This is the very definition of learned helplessness. That is exactly what this society breeds. The system breeds it. The only difference between us and the elephant is the elephant traveling around on train cars with the circus is very unhappy. The elephant knows it's getting fucked over and it's depressed. He senses that he should be somewhere else, like on the thousand square miles of the Serengeti. We believe our situation to be the most wonderful demonstration of freedom ever devised by those wonderful founding fathers. We sing songs to it. The controllers allow us physical pleasure and all the ale we can drink. And what more is there to life than that? The spiritless elephant, who's all depressed in his train car going from Cleveland to Detroit, that elephant exhibits intelligence. We do not. We pledge allegiance to a piece of cloth. Think about that weird ritual before all the sporting events. We've done it so many times in our lives the bizarre practice seems perfectly normal, even to most of us. It's not like only a few big events a year, like the Super Bowl, uh, you know, comes up, something massive comes up, a mind control ritual, 
of the national anthem that is attached to the big S sporting event like the NBA Finals. No, the song plays and people stand at all sporting events, right down to high school basketball games and the rodeo clown show. Where rodeo the clowns are running around jumping in barrels, and they got to have the national anthem before that shit. How many have ever taken a minute to consider how bizarre it is to openly pledge allegiance to a flag that represents an enslaving control structure, and then to do it thousands of times in one's lifetime, thousands of times? It's the most outward display of coordinated mind control that ever existed. How many people stop to realize what's really going on there? Almost no one has. Who the hell would pledge allegiance to a piece of cloth? Since the cloth can't be my ultimate master, I'm pledging allegiance to those who call themselves our leaders. But all of them are psychopathic criminals who can't wait to get back to their pedo islands. And these people on the news that frolic around, these are the parasites I can see. How about the parasites I can't see? Of course, if I remain seated or choose to remain seated during the anthem at the next Philadelphia Flyers game, the mind-controlled people around me will become so triggered I'd probably be attacked. How big of, I wonder, how big of a fake cast do I need to wear into the game so people don't harass me if I stay seated during the national anthem? I'd probably have two big guys come up to me and offer to hold me up, lift me up out of my seat, so I can respect the cloth myself. What's the very best situation for a slave master? Of course, when his slaves don't understand their slaves. Can you imagine how great a prison guard job would be if the inmates, say at San Quentin, the inmates of San Quentin cell block D, They believe they're all free patriotic peoples waving the banners representing their ward or cell block and singing country music songs about how great life is behind bars in San Quentin. That'd be a hell of a job if you were, you know, one of those security uh, people that work San Quentin. As it is now, there's like a one in ten chance they're going to be attacked once a year. Those people have balls working in those types of prisons. Okay. Maybe that's far-fetched, but what's the second best situation for a slave master then? It's when some of his slaves are kind of aware of their situation, but they're just too darn comfortable to want to do anything about it. And you know generally what this situation is then, right? It's what Malcolm X talked about in the 60s. The house Negro versus the field Negro. We have the same dynamic today in America across all races. They've created an entire population of house Americans living inside and obeying master's system. They've been brainwashed to love the freedoms the master provides instead of restoring or at least understanding all the liberties that have been stolen. It's been comfortable for people for a long time. People are comfortable in their beds with their bi-weekly paychecks who may be aware that there's a general demise of this country but they're too damn comfortable to do one thing about it. If a boot is stomping on liberty somewhere, it's not their problem. The boot hasn't stomped me yet. My new 80-inch LCD TV looks great, and my master lets me fill my belly with beer using after-tax dollars that's taxed again at the time of my beer sale. In our discussion going forward, it's important to define, quote, the system. The system is the total outward manifestation of those who are quote, in control here, quote the puppet masters, and those who project their fat faces all over the screen that surrounds us. The total outward manifestation of the screen, the temptation screen that surrounds us. Basically, it's everything you run into as you live your life every day moving along the Monopoly board. You may choose to say society instead of the system. Now, in 1802, a man living rurally may have only run into the system, say, once a month. Maybe there may have been some small annual tax he may have been asked to pay uh, for whatever cattle he kept. Or potentially another aspect of the system may pop up in front of the man in 1802 from time to time. You know, once a year or so, the system may come to him uh, and get right in his face. 
you know, a cavalry lieutenant, an agent of the system, may appear at his door while hunting Indians and say, Hey, buddy, have you seen this red man? Well, what did he do, lieutenant? I don't know. It's not my job to ask questions. All I know is how to kill him. Other than that, the rural man of 1802 was basically left alone. System didn't get in the man of 1802's face very often. As time moves literally forward, the system grows fatter and fatter and keeps pushing Jabba the Hutt's face into our face more and more aggressively. Today's human has the system in his face all day long, 365 days a year. Do you have a cell phone? There you go. The system can now crawl up your ass minute by minute using hundreds of different tools. The news media is the most in-your-faced manifestation of the system. The man of 1802 would have been appalled by today's media. You only think it's normal because you were slow-dripped into being dependent on it, at least for weather and sports. In ending this section, it's important to note that going back through time, somebody living on a farm in the 1700s and even sharecropping outside of the king's castle, generally these people were left alone. Obviously, it's all one different form of a slave system, sharecropping, working for the king. But but today's society, the system is in our face. It's an inch away from us all day long, and it's getting worse. <laughs>